Now we're going to go ahead and complete the final exam review. Question number 15 gives you two ordered pairs. One ordered pair is letter C. One ordered pair is letter D. In the fourth quadrant, C is located at negative 2, positive 1. It's in quadrant 2. D is located at positive 7, negative 5. Remember the first coordinate is where it's located on the x-axis. The second coordinate would be where it's located on the y-axis. Question 16 gives us an equation with such an ordered pair, and we are to substitute in values for x and y and see if this is true. So the y would be 20, the x would be 4. When we work this out, we see that 20 is indeed equal to 20. So yes, this ordered pair would be a solution. Number 17 is another equation, and this time you have to graph the linear equation. So make yourself a chart with an X and a Y and choose two simple numbers like 1 and 0 to substitute into this equation. If I take a 1 and substitute it in for the X, then it looks like this. And 3 times 1 is 3 and 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. So that means on the graph I will have a point at 1 and positive 8. And I plot that point. Then I will take this other simple number of 0 and substitute it in to the original equation and that will give me 0 plus 5 which is just 5. That tells me that the point 0 positive 5 is also on the line. So my line would go through these two points. Question number 18 switches gears and asks us to use the product rule. Remember the product rule for exponents says that you are to add the exponents. This, equi this problem is negative 8p to the 7th times 4p to the 6th. You will multiply the coefficients and get negative 32. Then you add these two exponents and get p to the 13th. That would be the final answer. Question 19 asks you to use the quotient rule for exponents. The quotient rule says you are to subtract your exponents. And we have 4a, 13b to the 8th, c to the 7th, all over abc. The abc at the bottom are assumed to be powers of 1. So when we simplify, we will have a 4. Then you subtract 13 minus 1 is 12, so it's a 12. 8 minus 1 is 7, b to the 7th. 7 minus 1 is 6 c to the 6th. So that would be my final answer. Question 20 asks you to use the power rule. The power rule says that you are to multiply exponents. The power rule will always have a problem inside of a parentheses. And when we talk about multiplying exponents, we're actually talking about the exponents that are inside that parentheses versus the one that's on the outside. So I multiply my exponent 4 times 3, which is 12, so that's p12. 4 times 2 is 8, that's v to the 8th. 4 times 2 is 8 on the bottom, so that's s to the 8th. But now 2 in front is a regular number, it's an integer. So we have to say 2 with an exponent 4 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 
You could put that in the calculator and quickly get 16. So my final answer would be this. Now 21 does not tell you which rule to use, but if you recall, we had something called the zero exponent rule. Anytime you have a base with a zero exponent, that base turns automatically into 1. So 1 plus 1 simply equals 2 in this case. Question 22 gives us a polynomial to divide. So I have the polynomial, it's a trinomial, in the top of a fraction, and I'm going to divide each term by the bottom of the fraction. So I rewrite it something like this. You're actually using the quotient rule when you do this division because quotient means divide. Okay, 6 divides into 36 6 times and I will subtract the exponents to get x1. 6 divides into 35 times and I subtract the exponents and 6 minus 6 is 0. Then 6 divides into 36 6 times again and I subtract my exponents and I get 1, but notice the larger value of the exponent is at the bottom. So I must write this as 6 over x to the first. And that would be my final answer. Question 23 has us find a GCF which stands for greatest common factor. We start off with a trinomial and think what is the greatest number that will divide or factor into all of the numbers given, and that number would be 3. Also, what letter is shared by all three terms in the trinomial, and that letter is x. We can at most only take away a single x from each term. So when you write your answer, the GCF is always in the front of your answer. Then you will take that 3x and divide every term just like we did in the previous problem. So 3 divides into 27, 9, and then I subtract my exponents, that's an understood 1, and I get 9x squared. 3 divides into 6 twice, and I subtract my exponents, 2 minus 1 would leave x1. Then 3 divides into 12 four times, and of course when I subtract exponent 1 minus 1, they cancel at 0. So this would be my final answer, with the GCF in the front. Question 24 gives us a four-term polynomial. And we will uh, solve this or factor this by the grouping method. The grouping method says in step one, you are supposed to separate this problem into two parts. Then in step two, you are to take the GCF of the front. Well, that would be three because three will divide into three and into 21. Bring down the plus sign. The GCF for the second or last part of this polynomial is Y. The only thing these two last terms have in common would be the letter Y. And when I divide, they both cancel out. Now step three is the final step. Notice that I have X plus Y in both the front and the back of the problem. That will now be written in the front of your answer. And the second part of your answer is made up of these terms that are outside each parentheses. So I had a 3 and then a y with a plus sign in between. That would be my final answer. 25 is a trinomial. Now remember when we factor a trinomial it's good to know the signs. If everything's positive, then that means you'll use a plus and a plus, and x times x will give you x squared. Now, what times what gives me 18? Well, 3 times 6, 9 times 2. But now let's add these. 3 plus 6 is 9. Is that my middle term? No. 
9 plus 2 is 11. Is that my middle term? Yes. So 9 and 2 would be the missing values. My answer would be x plus 9 times x plus 2. 26 is another trinomial. And in this one, since the last number is negative, I know I need a positive and a negative. Again, x times x gives me x squared in the front. Now I think about 12, 12 is 4 times 3, and I know one of these needs to be negative. Negative 4 times 3 equals negative 12. Now what if I replace that with a plus sign? Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 is the understood middle term, so that's correct. I must have a negative 4 and a positive 3 in my answer. Remember, you can always check this with the FOIL method or the distributive property and work it backwards. Number 27 would be the difference of two squares. It's a binomial. Think about it. 7 times 7 equals 49. 8 times 8 equals 64. When you have the difference of two squares, you will always have a positive and a negative sign. That makes sure there's no middle term. Since the 49 is in front of the original problem, its factors, 7 and 7, will be in the front of each parentheses. Then there will also be x times x to get x squared. Now the 64 is in the back of the original problem, so the 8 times 8, its factors, will be in the back of each parentheses. And that's your final answer. Last problem on the review sheet is 6x squared plus 17x plus 12. And it is actually a multiple choice on the review sheet. I have choice A, choice B, choice C, and then choice D, which says prime. Now remember, prime means it does not factor at all. Let's go ahead and work this one by going backwards a bit, uh, working it in reverse, and trying to figure out what would be correct. If you notice, the original problem has all positive signs, so there should be no negative sign in the answer. Right off the bat, you can omit choice C because it has negative or subtraction signs. In choice A, if I work this out and multiply, 6x times x is 6x squared. 6x times 4 is 24x. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 4 is 12. Notice the middle terms 24 plus 3 would be 27. That's not what I have. I have 17 as my middle term. So A would not be an option. It must be B or D. Let's multiply. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 4 is 8x. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times 4 is 12. Look at those middle terms. 8 plus 9 would give me 17x, and that is indeed what I have. So the correct answer would be choice B. Study this study guide very carefully, and we will take our final exam next week. Good luck.